So Ali, we've talked in other videos about the difference between over-the-counter and exchange-traded uh, markets. So I'll just uh, today I'm going to give you a bit of a primer on how an exchange traded market and particularly the order book in an exchange works. Okay. So to get back to starting point, we've got different market participants who all want to trade one and the same asset around the same point in time. And we talked about the invention of this uh, centralized middleman, the central counterparty, who takes on a number of roles as in order to give security for, for this market. So uh, one element we're not going to talk too much about is the delivery versus payment role. So if you sell a, a car, then when you sell that car, of course, you at some point you have to hand over keys and documentation and the guy's going to walk away with the car, but then the guy will have to give you cash before you do that. So the center counterparty would basically take the keys and the documentation and this is the guy who's buying from you, he would hand over the cash. And then at some point when the center counterparty says, this is, by the way, this is a smart contract in, in its own way. So when, when the, the parties have fulfilled their duties, then the counterparty, the, the center counterparty can say, yep, yeah, you know, you can take the car and uh, yep, yeah, you can take the, the, the cash and uh, all done. So that's one of the rules of the uh, center counterparty. The other one is like, let's imagine that it's not just this guy who wants to buy the, the car, it's all these guys. And how do I make sure that I got the best price for my car? Well, that's where the order book comes in. And I don't know what the original meaning was, but the, in this sense, order book has meets both definitions. Order in terms of rank ordering the the best Person. bid and offer, and um, and order as in what these guys are submitting are orders to either buy or sell. So let's say we have multiple. You know, we're talking about Ford Fiesta, and there's 25 guys selling a Ford Fiesta and 50 guys buying a, a Ford Fiesta, right? And they're all the same color. I mean, it's, it's exactly the same asset, same color, same model, same build, same everything. Completely homogenized. Mm -hmm. So the, what the order book does is there are two types of orders. One, which is a market order where I, I absolutely want transaction fulfillment, but I am a price taker. So, you know, I want the Ford Fiesta and I want it at all costs. That's one type of order. And the other one would be a limit order. It's like, well, I'm willing to part ways with my Ford Fiesta uh, if they pay me £25,000, but if they don't, then you know, I'd rather keep my Fiesta, right? So, it's, uh, so it's, it, those are the two types of orders. We'll come back to that. One is the a market order. The other one's a limit order. So these guys are uh, selling. So, you know, this guy is completely in love with this Ford Fiesta and he's, you know, I, I love it so much, it's worth 30,000 pounds. It's like, whoa. And then another guy is slightly more reasonable, 29,000. And then at the bottom here, we've got uh, a guy for 25,000, right? So this is the, the guys who are offering the, the Ford Fiesta. The liquidity in each case is, could be one car. But maybe we've got a wholesaler here who's got three cars, three cars at 26,000. And then there's another guy who's got two. And this is just a guy who kind of showed up and he doesn't clearly have a clue about the prices of Ford Fiesta. So he's completely out of the market. Uh, and then we've got the buyers here. And again, you know, same thing. So it's one guy is bidding 24,500. And that one's 23,000. That one, 22,000. And again, we've got market depth here. So this could be there's two cars here, there's one car, and uh, uh, this is three, whatever. Okay, so this is our order buyers. book. Uh, these are the buyers. buyers. Yeah, so you notice the prices are going all the way up. So, the, the, you know, the, the, if you want to, so let, let's look at the, the, the market depth and the top of book. What is the top of book right now? Well, the bid ask spread is 25,500. Uh, so, you know, until we get somebody who crosses the spread, there's going to be no transaction. So time is going by and this thing doesn't move. And then at some point somebody, oh shit, you know, my car just broke down. I need a Ford Fiesta Pronto. So he submits a market order for 25,000 to buy it. And boom, you know, this guy's gone, this guy's gone. Okay.
And, and that's where perhaps, and this is of course dynamic because everybody see, sees what everybody else is doing. So perhaps a wholesaler now says, wow, I need to dump some stock. So, you know, off we go. Slashes, Slashes one of these and puts in another one at 24,500. And then, you know, again, is this clear that the spread has widened? Yeah. Why? Well, because we, we have used up some of the buyers and there's been no buyers coming in. So if no buyers coming in, what happens with the price of a Ford Fiesta? Well, it goes down, right? It goes down to the spread has widened. It's the 24,500, 23,000. And then it's a question of waiting until this, that this happens, right? Yeah. So what happens to this guy? Well, he might have his limit order. It's not going to be hit. At some point it expires. Same here. And then perhaps they'll have to basically play around with it. So they, there, are, there are policies around what you can do with the orders, but that's how the order book works. So the spread, for the audience, the spread closes over time as a result of buyers realizing the price discrepancies. Well, we've talked about the top of book spread. <coughs> so we talked about the top, uh, top of book spread, and it basically the more participants are and the more liquid the asset, the, the, the narrower, the thinner the, the top the of book spread tends to be. Things and get more competitive. Things get more competitive. And then, of course, there's the liquidity as well, the liquidity aspect, because there's a spread for one car, but then there's a spread for, say, five cars. What's the spread for five cars? Well, if I want to get five cars right now, I'm going to have to match these guys. So it's four cars here, four cars there, and it would be the uh, volume weighted average of one at this times three at that. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid age is catching up with me. I can't do it in my head anymore. No, and, uh, and, and in this one, it would be 23,000, uh, so 22,300, something like that. And then and basically the, the more, and that's the, the concept of VWAP. This is the volume weighted average price, which basically gives you a spread as a function of the quantity you want to a position. Now, when it comes to orders, so when it comes to orders, uh, there's lots of mumbo jumbo, but basically two types of orders. There's market orders, and there's there's uh, limit orders, and both have two elements. One is Price, the other one is quantity. But the difference is that in one place, the quantity is fixed. So you, as a, in a market order, you, you want to get your car, no matter the cost. And basically, the, the price is a function of the quantity. Whereas in limit, you want to get rid of your car only if it's at a, at a given price. So quantity is a function of, of price. It's the other way around. In this case, a market order, you're acting as a liquidity taker. In the limit order, you're acting as a liquidity maker. And the difference, and again, what is the difference between making liquidity and being a liquidity provider? Well, making liquidity, by definition, when you enter a limit order into the order book, you're providing liquidity. But for, for you to be considered a liquidity provider, the convention is that you have to continuously be streaming liquidity. So basically, you would be the sort of wholesale guy in the previous thing who's basically watching what goes on and then adjusts all the, the provides a, 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 um, a dynamic feed into, into the market to realize. So that's how the order book of an exchange traded asset works. In terms of which assets work like this, well, anything which is exchange traded, so equities, uh, futures, um, there are exchange traded options, and more and more as a result of the financial crisis in 2008, regulators are pushing things to have a central counterparty because generally it's re uh, for liquid assets that, that have basically plain vanilla nature, it's regarded as the best way to make uh, liquidity converge.